How deep is your love? Hello, lovely listener, beloved listener, cherished listener. This is How Deep Is Your Love. And what are we loving this week, Nathan? Chicken thigh. Are you a thigh or a breast man? Oh, thigh. Every time? Yes. And that is why I love you. If I never had chicken breast for the rest of my life, I, I wouldn't notice it. I abhor chicken breast. For one reason, well, for many reasons, but... Dear listener, you might appreciate this reason. Uh, they don't taste of anything. I'm sure they used to taste of something. But breast is a great place to inject uh, a chicken um, to with water and to you know and and what have you antibiotics what else whatever else they do um, some of the time uh, and it just there's no flavour for me chicken breast I love a thigh in fact you know there's that what's that hotel down it's apparently the Queen's favourite hotel and they do a black Black leg, which is a type of chicken, uh, thigh salad with hazelnuts and bits and pieces. I will remember that the place I was there with Michael Portillo, weirdly enough, because you know that's how I roll this Glasgow born socialist. <laughs> Although, actually, he's a lovely man now, I, I like him now, um, very much. I like him very much. So, chicken thighs now, I you've heard me speak about. The reason we have chicken breasts in restaurants is because of portion control and there is now an expectation for it and also you can pre-cook a chicken breast. You know, for example, when you have a chicken pakora in a restaurant, the breast has been boiled off before, which is just is not the right way to do it, you know. But people are so panicky and I'm not going to pretend I'm not a little bit panicky about chicken these days because, you know, so the last thing you want is anyone getting ill on chicken. You did have chicken for your lunch today, though, didn't you? Yes. I cooked it, didn't I? Yes. How are you feeling? Fine. Excellent news. Um, thing about chicken breast is it it works three different ways. So I think you've heard me talk about um, a shop I go to called KRK. And at KRK, whenever I'm doing my curries for my delivery service, I always get boneless chicken thighs because they have all the flavour you want. And, it, and also they have enough fat. Breast has no fat. And you need that fat. What that fat does is it keeps that meat lubricated. It also renders in the curry and gives you that chicken flavour. You know, and also they've been... Uh, so, for example, you're looking at Jewish chicken soup. The reason they believe, it's not been proven yet, that Jewish chicken soup is such an effective remedy is because of the, the, the fat rendering and there being some penicillin type qualities within that I mean whether it's good for you or not it's fucking delicious so I mean again I find myself back in the Jews when it comes to food and why wouldn't you what a culture built on food there was a standing joke in my when I was still married in our family um, <laughs> it's not even a joke I lived in northwest London I lived about two miles from the Jewish kind of neighbourhood and I always on a Friday night for some reason I want to go and have Jewish food and of course, they're all shut on a Friday night, aren't they? So we drive through the closed shops of Golders Hill and Golders Green. And me thinking, oh shit, it's Friday. Um, no wonder. So chicken thighs work really well. So you've got the, the chopped variety, which is really good if you're doing... Um, there's a thing called takatak, which I have mentioned before. So you're on a big um, tava, a big kind of curved uh, griddle, if you will. I'm being distracted by Nathan's odd socks. What's going on there, son? You always wear odd socks. And intentionally. In which case it's not odd. <laughs> it's just weird. <laughs> so we've got we've got kind of aquamarine in yellow on one foot, and we've got pink, red, and navy blue on the other. Very strange indeed. Anyway, so tuck a tuck. <laughs> Uh, with liver and kidneys, uh, heavily spiced with garam masala, black pepper, and chili. Very simple, but very pokey and just delicious. And you also you can do that with chicken if it's cut small enough and if it's thigh, it's got enough flavour for a fast fry. What you'll find with a breast in the fast fry is it dries out, gone, 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 gone. But with the thighs, it's got enough going on. Also, it's got that connective tissue. And think about it: the breast doesn't do much work on a chicken. The thigh does all the work. That's where all the flavour is. We're going to do um, an oxtail chat 
uh, in a few weeks' time, I think. And that's another, you know, think about how often you see a, a cow's tail wag. Um, that is a joke that I did in an earlier podcast. I'm not going to repeat it again because Nathan remembers it and it was quite funny. But uh, clearly not funny enough for him. <laughs> so, and again, we spoke about pakora, fish pakora. Um, I think it was last week we spoke about fish pakora the week before. Um, chicken thigh is great for pakora. But I, 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 tr- I like to have it really thin. I like to slice it really thin. Because that way you're just sure it's cooked and it's in and out. It's in and out. And delicious. Um, but for currying, I curry my... So we've talked about the chop. So like chopped up bits of thigh. Um, we then sliced bits, which are really good for... So for example, if you're doing a, a chicken salad for a Sunday lunch, or a, a midweek lunch even... Um, if you do sliced thighs, again, you've got that length and it looks good in the plate. So if, you, if you've done a, a similar kind of chop on your onions, sliced onions, your red peppers, you've got your de-seeded, skinned, mezzaluna, cucumbers, everything looks pleasant and, and there is some degree of style that's going to enter that salad. Um, you can just you know, literally marinate them in a bit of yoghurt and some spices. And again... I tend to go for the the brown spices on that. I think cumin, coriander, very, very good. Garam masala, black, plenty black pepper, salt. I tend to, the chi- if I want chilies, I'll put fresh green chilies in. Because I like to keep that, that colour quite strong. And what red chilies and paprika do is they will make it look red. And there's enough red going on in that salad. You know, again, think you eat with your eyes. You know, I actually knew a guy that ate with his eyes. Matt and Hopkins were a fucking mess in his house. Um, and then the other way is to do the whole chicken thighs, either on the bone or deboned. There is a lot to be said. Again, we get into the kind of these fine details, fine margins of cooking. I love skin on, bone in chicken thigh. Jamie used to do a recipe, Jamie Oliver. It was brilliant. I mean, brilliant if you've got kids kind of growing up kids in the week, all in one roasting tray. Chicken thighs, bacon, tomatoes, whatever else you want to chuck in, salt, pepper, olive oil, bang in the oven. I mean, 25 minutes, it's done. You know, as long as you don't have any monster big thighs in there. And we all know about monster big thighs, don't we, Nathan? Nathan. You do not have monster big thighs. You've got the skinniest thighs in the world. They're quite muscly. They are muscly, but like, I mean, you know, you've good legs. Anyway... Enough flirting with Sparlink. Um, so, and the skin, there's something about the skin on thighs that really... I, oh, I love it when all my female friends, and it's predominantly my female friends, who won't eat the skin of chicken. And I get it. And when I get thigh chicken uh, skin, I'm over the moon. We used to do this in the restaurant too for the butter chicken. When we would skin the chicken for other dishes... Um, we would then lay it between two trays, oil it, salt it, and roast it quickly, and it, it would become like crispy skin, and you'd, it would break like crisps, and you'd put a shard of that on the butter chicken. It was a great idea, utterly delicious, stupidly delicious. So I love the skin. The only issue with skin, obviously, is you're not permeating the flesh. So if you're gonna do a salt and pepper um, roast chicken, roast chicken thigh dish and then do a little masala with it a separate masala that's that's going to be good you know you just won't have that marriage of flavors necessarily but both flavors are strong both flavors are good then you've got the skinned um boned deboned thigh again that's great for marination you know because you can the great thing about having the bone in terms of marination is You've got something to stop your knife going through. So when you slash, you can slash it with the skin on too, but it ends up looking a bit messy, I find. And again, again I want it to be clean. The bits of skin kind of come off and all the rest of it. Nobody, you know, nobody wants that. It's a night's out and net's hell. Do you know what I mean? Bits of skin everywhere. Um, so yeah, you slash your chicken thighs and you really work your marinade and all that. And with yogurt, again, yogurt is so good. It's the acid in yogurt that's doing the job for you. Leave it overnight and you've got delicious. I did a thing with the chicken legs and the whole legs, legs and thighs of, of uh, 
it was a smoked paprika and Kashmiri chili uh, to sort of roast chicken. It was one of the most popular things I've ever posted on Facebook, actually. Um, so we'll probably do that for you at some point as well. But um, the recipe this week... Did I say what the recipe was going to be this week? We should do that recipe then. That Because that was really popular. Let's do that. Should we do that? Yes, I'll do. Would you do that, Nathan? Yes. I was right. I was taking notes. <laughs> oh, were you? <laughs> you can take the boy after I've done Fermilin, but you can't teach him to pay attention. Um, so we'll do that. We'll do... Um, Kashmiri uh, chili and smoked paprika. Chicken thighs. Lovely. Great picnic dish. I mean, people feel inhibited about chicken and reheating and recooking chicken. And I'm, I'm, listen, I am concerned about it. I don't, you know, it's, it's food. And, you know, and it ought not to cause anyone any upset. But, you know, if you shouldn't see it as a limitation, if you cook chicken, and some left over, and that's sandwich material for tomorrow. It's picnic material for tomorrow. You don't have to heat it up. Just bring it out and let it come to room temperature. You know? I mean, you can reheat chicken. You just need to have your internal temps, right? You know? Um, so, but that's another story for another day. So that's what we're going to do. I'm just thinking if there's anything else. Oh, Korean chicken is a lovely thing to do with chicken thighs. Mm-hmm. You've had my Korean chicken, haven't you? Mm-hmm. Did you have it for lunch the other day? Mm-hmm. How was it? There was some thighs in there. Did you taste the thighs? There was thighs and there was breasts. Awesome. Well, just because... I feel short-changed. Well, I, well, listen, let me just tell you, this isn't even joking. What have we been drinking today? What have we been recording, right? Sparkling water, yeah. right? I had, to, I had to order online 12 bottles of sparkling water because I'm a dick. No, but because my best friend adores sparkling water. She got me addicted to it. Um... But you could, there's none on the shelves in anywhere in East, the East End of Glasgow. Like, you couldn't get... You could get one packet of chicken thighs in the East End of Glasgow. I mean, Brexit's hitting. Um, anyway, cheery, cheery. Uh, I think we've completed chicken thighs. Do you think? Oh, my ex-wife. Oh. See, here's the thing, right? When we met, she didn't cook. I did all the cooking, and I loved it. She learned to cook. And actually, it was that weird one. See, you. Um, I talk about this. I talk about this in my uh, the beginners cookbook about well, as we were students. I did the cooking for us together, um, and then watching her because I thought it was helpful when trying to indicate and convey to you how it was to learn cooking about her experience because that's the person closest to me. Um, I watched learn to cook, and this is why I have great heart in you learning to cook. And great heart in it being a success. It's because I watched her. She never made a bad meal. She made a meal that wasn't great, but it was never bad. Because she'd grown up eating it. You know, like so many of you, you're not here as people that have never tried Indian food. You love Indian food. That's why you're here. Or you love me. And I believe there's medication for that. Um, Bless you. Um, And so, you know, my ex-wife's experience is really good. She not only learn how to make amazing Indian food, and like her food is like bang on. She did this great southern fried chicken, baked chicken recipe, and I was astonished. Like she got it off somewhere or other recipe book, but there's Parmesan cheese in it, did you know? And breadcrumbs and pepper, cayenne pepper and all the rest of it. It's a delicious dish. We might have to do that one day. I love, I love kids. Anyway, what is food, Nathan? Love. What is love, Nathan? Food. What is love food? Life. Life. Um, thank you for listening yet again. Um, remember, get in touch. Tell me what's what. Tell me what else you do with your thighs. <laughs> See, do you know, I like what well, I was going for on that one, wasn't it? <laughs>